This is about protecting and future-proofing the game of rugby. Yeah. It needs the biggest stars possible, otherwise we're going to flatline. Why are we off the bottom of the chain on Gen Z? Because we're not allowing them to go and be themselves and show themselves and we've got to change that. He's so good on the field, people want to know what's, what's yeah. behind the curtain. Do a documentary on him, do a streamable thing on him, find out what he does, how does he train, his routine. Do you see him as a future England captain? I think he has all the ability and talent and agency to, to go nuclear. I think he shies away from it. Rugby's a very, very big sport. It's not some small time sport sitting in the corner. You've got a big audience who are prepared to pay big money to be part of it. Hello Dream Team, welcome along to this week's episode of The Good, The Bad and The Rugby in partnership with our very good friends at Continental Tyres, Hot Topic Alert. This week, we are asking the question, who are the top 10 stars in the men's game of rugby union right here, right now? The names, the looks, the talent and the characters to perhaps build the next four years around as the game looks to pull itself out of an amazing World Cup, but a bit of a slump elsewhere. This is not a show about the greatest players in the game. These are the guys who put bums on seats, brands want in adverts, television directors get excited about, and people flock to on social media. Rugby is a game that traditionally struggles with tall poppies. Characters that sit outside a team environment think Cipriani, Henson, Carlos Spencer, Freddie Michelac, and Quay Cooper, who've all found star power and rugby a difficult combination to mix. Others, though, have found it far easier and have taken the game to new heights both on and off the field. Think Johnny, Jonah, Carter, O'Driscoll, Chabal, Carling, Kerwin, Campesi, Blanco, Cullen, Habana and Sonny Bill. All bar one of them backs. Perhaps that's just the way this is. In 20 years of working at Sky, I learned that two players moved TV audiences when they played. Johnny Wilkinson and Danny Cipriani. If you promoted their involvement, more people tuned in. But the question is, who is next in that line? We have pulled together a totally non-exhaustive, unscientific list of 20 players who we think are the brightest names on and off the field right now. And Tins has got a whole load more to throw into the mix as well. They wouldn't necessarily make a World 15 or Alliance tour, but they match their deeds on the field with a willingness to try things off it. And the aim, therefore, is to pick our top 10 stars of the men's game right now and alongside two pretty well qualified candidates, two men who have certainly transcended the gap between the front pages and the back. Perhaps a little too effectively at times. <laughs> we Haskins, welcome to you. And also joining us, bringing a bit of industry expertise, is Steve Martin, who is the CEO of MNC Saatchi Sport and Entertainment. Uh, he might look 21, but Steve has got 30 plus years of industry experience and has worked extensively with the likes of Tiger Woods, Messi, Beckham, Ronaldo, Rooney, Rory McIlroy, and Johnny Wilkinson, to name a few, and to add to his credibility as a heartbroken Ireland fan. We'll come on to that in due course. Very warm welcome. Thank you for coming along. Pleasure. Should we start with a gentle loosener? Who is the biggest star in sport right now, full stop? Great question. Because I think, you know, it's a perennial debate, isn't it, of who's in, who's not. You know, you tend to have these opinions straight after big events. So um, we'll obviously come on to rugby. I mean, Messi obviously has this enduring appeal. He keeps doing it time and time again. I think these guys would continue to reinvent themselves, take on new challenges. I think getting out of Paris, going to Miami has been another sort of newsy point for him. And, you know, he's doing it again, albeit in a much easier league. So I think he sort of transcends everybody really at the moment. But Does it, um, do, they, do footballers like smash like Patrick Mahomes or? They do, yeah. The numbers are off the charts. Just because of the yeah. worldwide nature yeah. of football. They do. And it's just, you know, it's, it's in every market, isn't it? Yeah. You know, even NFL or NBA, it's like not even half the amount of markets of football's in. So, but Ronaldo and Messi, like you said, are, are just next level. And, like. and their followings, like you just need to, albeit the world doesn't exist just on social followings. Oh, again, we'll talk about that, I'm sure, later. But their followings are just extraordinary, and the where they get to is extraordinary. And every place they ever go, you know. They're bombarded and the, I mean, it's it's never ending, I think. And these guys are coming to the end of their careers, but they're still doing it. There was a very interesting moment at the Rugby World Cup final, two moments actually, where Novak Djokovic got put up on the big screen and there was a sort of, oh, it's Novak Djokovic. And then Roger Federer got put up on the, the big screen and the crowd went bananas. And that sort of leads me to the question, what makes a sports star as opposed to a great player? Yeah, I mean, again, it's a big debate, but I, I would say 
it's the likability factor is huge. I think you can be the best player on the pitch, but really disliked off it. And I think when you join the two, it's so powerful. But it's it doesn't happen just by chance. I mean, this is all you know. It's created and curated. I think now it's really thought through. Somebody like Federer was so huge and loved because of his humble approach, and he played beautifully. He didn't even break sweat, but it, you know he was an extraordinary character on the court. But so humble off it, has that classy approach. So he's so liked. You can't not say he's like. Whereas Djokovic obviously divides opinion on everything. I mean, it's so weird him. because he's the he's the great he's, like, great, he's, he's the greatest ever. But he, but like nobody, I mean, I, I I like him, but you can see why people don't. It's mad, isn't it? When I went to the Aussie Open, having lived down there, had never been to an Aussie Open before, and actually watched him in the final, and you know he was incredible. Like he's an athletic, he's just he's just incredible as an athlete, but you can't like him, and there's a real <laughs> barrier to that, you know. So because. Uh, it, I just don't think his attitude, his chippiness, the way he behaves on court sometimes, and it just puts barriers up there that don't, you know, shouldn't be there. But he can't, he obviously can't change from that perspective. So that likability factor is, it's so subjective. I know, I know you feel, but, mate. But, I'm, I'm, <laughs> but the numbers don't lie. Like the numbers don't lie. And, you know, you, you even look at the commercial success and the enduring success of the likes of a Federer. You know, he's really, really smart in terms of how he's, his, his career's only just ended, but you know what he's doing in terms of investments again is going to keep that going for years and years. It was and years. mad, well, with 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 Federer in particular, because he, you know, with Nike, he worked with Nike, even styling around Nike, the, the way that he was dressed, the way he looked, how classic he was, and then for that Uniqlo for him to go and leave them last minute and invest in that and own that and try and take that forward, just very smart, savvy. savvy. I'm always fascinated by those things where you see people change the business element. Yeah. I mean, Federer has just done a deal with On Running, which is the Swiss brand. Right. And he went to them. And on running is like this phenomenon, and the uh, sort of you know it's going to compete absolutely with Adidas and Nike going forward in Puma. Um, the momentum is unreal around that business. They're making brilliant product. He went to them and said, "You're a we're a Swiss company. I want to be part of it." And he did a three percent equity deal with no money. And he said, "I'll provide the face. I'll provide any you know marketing and support I can." And his equity is now three hundred million. So he's made. <laughs> More than double off the court, just with that one investment. Wow. So they're very; these guys are they're a different planet. They're, it's not just what you see up here and that likability. They're very smart behind the scenes as well. It does. It doesn't make put rug. You appreciate things like that, and you look at the deals and the scale of things that happen. It all then when you realise what happens in rugby and what people have done off it, it, it really does show it in the. <laughs> The, the light that it is in, which is just so amateur across the board. Which we have discussed on many a show. From your perspective, working across a multitude of sports territories and with a multitude of stars, where, where is rugby right now? Or is that just a, such an obvious question? No, it's not, because it, it's it's debated all the time. We talk about it all the time. What would you back? And rugby, you'd really question at the minute. That's not the... Um, Brilliant. You know, well, light well, a fire. Well, welcome along. No, no, but you'd question it for... There's so many good parts of it. There's so many values that are incredibly rich about rugby, you why it's got such a good following. That's, that's something special. Of course it is, but those are every four years, and then Six Nations, obviously, every year. I'm not... But if you know, rugby, per se, is at a... I think it's at a big crossroads. Of the, of the game because but also an opportunity and um, again we'll talk about the players need to sort of step up to that opportunity now into this next phase of the game I just think there's so many moving parts within rugby whether it's the broadcast side whether it's the sort of you know the concussion side whether it's the, just the broader governance of the game it all needs to come together and come from the top because you look at rugby underneath actually grassroots is doing really well women's rugby is doing incredibly well then you go up to, you know, the top of the game's actually pretty good. Rugby World Cup, big sellout. It's that middle part of the game. It's the 90% in the middle. I know. <laughs> do you know and do you that's know? the issue. It's the big disconnect between that. So that's where rugby needs to join the dots it's better. Funny, like, even now, even even now, if you look at, you know, obviously South Africa winning, I mean, Sears obviously raised to his own level off the back of winning back-to-back -back as captain and everything else. But you still don't see him everywhere on our screens. Yet you can still see Messi promoting brands you still see it constantly wherever you look same with you know R Ronaldo and what he gets up to and in, in the media and everything else but you don't really see the same amount of coverage even though you would say arguably Sia is a better example of 
what you can achieve through sport True. and your background and everything. Same with Cheslin Colby. You can still say that, look, what you can manage is a better example, but yet because of eyeballs, I assume that that holds brands back. Does rugby have a problem promoting stars within its game? Is it is it an uncomfortable relationship? I mean, do you look at Johnny Wilkinson, who sort of he never felt that comfortable promoting boots and the brands that he did after 2003. It, it seems like this tall poppy syndrome we talk of is very limiting in trying to generate stars. It definitely feels like there's a reluctance there. I think of of players wanting to put their head above the parapet, actually have a plan. You know, if you think of all those soccer players, they all have a plan. They all have a PR agent. They all have you know, a campaign that they're working towards. Again, it's not done by chance. You know, the Jack Grealish is the world at the minute. It's all, it's all, it's created. Like what Marcus Rashford's done. Yeah. I mean, Mara Toji's tried to do something similar, but Marcus Rashford, you know, supplying food to people and, and helping community, that is a thought out process and a plan. And he sticks a message the whole time. And that's all they talk about. And that's all they do to the point where he is a national hero because of what he did and standing up to the government. There's all a plan behind that. That's not just him sitting at home going, I'm going to make this happen. <coughs> Where teams pushed it and gone, yeah. what's, what, what do we need to, what's important for football to have social responsibility as part of their arsenal and they've grown it. But I think now there's, there's opportunities for, for probably half a dozen players in that England setup to do incredibly well. But they need to get at it. There needs to be a plan in place. They need to understand their audience better because I don't think they do. I don't even maybe think who they're communicating to and the scale of the, the, that audience because it's still a big market. Rugby's a very, very big sport. It's not some small-time sport sitting in the corner. You've got a big audience who are prepared to pay big money to be part of it. So it's then having a master plan against all that. And I think um, there's probably half a dozen players on that team alone who could be marketed so much better. Yeah. But they need to look at what they're saying, what they're doing, how they're opening the doors, and maybe seen. not be restricted by the union in particular, I think, because I think they're being held back a little bit. What would be a fascinating exercise would be to say to Team England, to the players, you market yourselves. Have a team meeting, work out which of you wants to do what, and we will then provide the right connections for you to do that. So, Marcus Smith, if you want to be on the front cover of GQ, we will make that happen. Joe Marler, if you want to be on the one show, we will make that happen. Henry Arundel, let's put you on to the, the channel in which you are most comfortable to go and tell your story and just see what happens if you give the responsibility of talking about them, about, about themselves and each other to the players themselves. Where does it start? Like, what yeah. is... What is the Kickstarter to change uh, to the? You know, we've we've just been having a massive conversation about this. What is the Kickstarter to change? Rugby? It has to it has to be pitch first. Of course, it has to be because you know it goes back to the discussion around Federer, why Johnny Wilkinson was so successful. Obviously, you know the, his moment of kicking the goal beside you, but you know, but he was so brilliantly commercialised over that period of time for three, four, five years. Not, I mean, still is, but that was that was really well put together. Whereas now there needs to be success in the pitch, and absolute focus on the pitch, and then it sort of you know it's much easier job because yeah. it looks too contrived otherwise. So you can't sort of force it. I think everything needs to be done through a pretty authentic lens, you know, because when it's when it's forced, it actually puts you off. Did you do Beckham Wilkinson ad? Yeah. T just t quickly tell us the story of that, how it came about. It came about because we'd done it. We'd done a Beckham ad. It was sort of back end in nineteen ninety seven when we signed him at Adidas, and he, um, you know, obviously his momentum was ridiculous immediately because yeah. he scored from the halfway line. It just suddenly started moving so quickly, and then, you know, three or four years in, he would done, I don't know, four or five big TV ads. This is in the era, by the way, when TV ads were like Hollywood blockbusters, yeah. you know, and it was the only big sort of media moment in time. There was no social media then, you got to remember. So it was, you know, big outdoor campaigns, big TV spots. You know, you'd do things in the middle of the newspapers, all the tabloids, and that, that was your marketing and media campaign. So when when Johnny obviously came on board, um, it was all around the Predator boat. Do you remember, Dave? Yeah. Aldred was yeah. teaching um, Johnny or coaching Johnny, and then he, we actually did a session with Aldred, with Beckham, because Beckham was really unhappy the way he was striking the ball. Weird. Wow. Um, and they did a session and she said, you know, this would be quite interesting. He brought the two of them together. And that, the, the reason that ad is so enduring is because the cameras almost just rolled. Yeah. It was very natural and it was a different tile, uh, style and tone. It wasn't overly produced. Oh, yeah, yeah. And if you look at it now, it looks like it looks super raw. 
but it was magic because they just let them talk. And what was the impact? Hugely. I mean, the, the, the Adidas brand was just rocketing then. I mean, it was whenever I joined Adidas in the sort of early 90s, Adidas was down here, nearly went bankrupt. And then, you know, they, they really, it was a guy called Robert Louis Dreyfus who came in and bought Adidas and he just said, we're going to sign the best talent in the world and we're going to market the hell out of them. And by the way, we haven't got very much advertising money, but PR will be a big thing and we'll make great products. And he went within, I think within the first 18 months, he signed Beckham, Real Madrid, Zidane, the All Blacks. I mean, that was to name but a few. I mean, it was a ridiculous story that happened that. And Johnny, I think, he became sort of this household name by those associations yeah, as well. Yeah. So he transcended rugby more. Also, I'm disappointed. I've said this about Johnny because obviously it's amazing, <laughs> but he did not capitalize capitalize on that. I mean, I would have been. Ha- I said it a million times. I would have been hanging out that with drop going, Fuck you... me! If I was Johnny Wilkinson, I was said it before. I looked like him. The and world would have ended. Yeah, what opportunity with David Beckham? <laughs> like, it's like they did something together, and that was the end of it. I'd be on it. I'd be with him the you, whole time. Just been in his in his documentary. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. But only again, Mate, David. I would have moved into a spare bedroom. <laughs> I, I, you know, I just I look good in a little black. It dress. was an would, extraordinary yeah. time. That I mean, that that was like beyond belief what was happening around that time. In what but, regard? Because, I don't want to give you a history lesson, but it, it was more just his star was rising to, like it was vertical. Yeah. And what you then had within what was happening in Manchester with the music scene, with, the, you know, the Stone Roses coming in, they had, you know, on the Happy back Mondays, of Three right. Strikes, Happy Mondays and Spiral Carpet. There was this massive sort of Manchester thing that was happening. Then you threw Beckham in and this combination was like, popular culture was going mad. And I'd ask right in the middle of that. And that's when Johnny then sort of was put into the middle of that. Yeah. For a rugby player, Johnny it was pretty Rose unusual. Is, a different, different but Johnny show. was so humble, you know, his yeah. humbleness was probably one of his most enduring appeals, I think. But he would go into that and just walk out, as you say. Not, <laughs> not worry about it too much. Out. <laughs> yeah. Open the door, look still be there. Yeah, Humble's yeah, not yeah. my middle name, yeah. sadly. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard about yeah. it, but I don't know what it's out. It was good, good time, that. It's a brilliant doc, actually, as well, the Beckham documentary. It does take those of us of a certain age right back to it all. Um, we've managed to not get very far into our top 10 players <laughs> in the world right now. So what we're going to do, I was going to ask you each to mark the 20 players we've come up with with three categories, which is on-pitch delivery, character and social media presence, and then brand and earning power. But what I quickly want to do actually is just whittle down the 20 to a 10. So it's a kind of, there are three of you you can vote. Let's just see if we can find a 10 from the 20. So see, I'm going to put straight in. I don't even think we need yes. to discuss that. We'll come back yes. to where he sits. Eben Etzebeth, two-time World Cup winning second row, instantly recognisable. Um, he will be 36 at the next World Cup. So I'm not sure if we're if we're basing this on you know, the next four years or so, uh, I'm not sure that counts in his favour, but he's got half a million on Instagram. You know, he is a big character um, in a sport in which, you know, big brutes still get great cut through. Is he a top 10 most influ- influential player in the world right now? I, I don't know, but interestingly, um, my old publisher's got his autobiography and apparently he's got an amazing story. Oh, really? So, I apparently there's something to it. I, I think, I think anyone who gets a head shave at 5am is, is good for me. Yeah. He's marketable <laughs> and sellable. Steve, you, you um, happy with that? Ever yeah, in? I like him. I like him. I actually didn't know much about him and actually I actually think he's come out of this World Cup better than yeah. the last one. Yeah. But he's got, he, he's one of the ones I still think has got a huge opportunity to tell that story because we don't know enough about yeah. him here. And he's Probably a big in South Africa yeah. today. He's big, big in four, you know, He's got massive biceps. Everyone knows, but yeah. there is more he could be doing, I think. Yeah. I recognise it's actually quite hard to say no to any of these people because we are talking essentially about the top 10 biggest characters. But Andre Pollard, 29, highest paid player in the world, I think, at Leicester. So so we've we, we've dug online. I'd say no because yeah, I, I don't know anything about him. I've got no, I, got, I, I couldn't I'd tell say him no. What, I've never heard his voice. I couldn't tell you what he... What, I'm, that's what I mean. I've never so said... I, it, I, and I think that I in, it, in its own right tells its own story. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, he's a good player. He's a bit like an NFL kicker for me. He comes on and wins, you know, wins games, which yeah, is yeah. like you can never take that away from him. I, it's probably an opportunity. I, I cannot believe he's the highest paid player. I mean, that is... But but also you've ne- I've never heard him. One point eight million US dollars. I mean that's I've incredible. I've never seen him appear in anything. Heard him speak. Done a campaign. No. Done evidence. Done anything. I, I, obviously, I'm an unbelievable player. I'm not talking about. That. I'm just talking from my perspective in yeah. terms of if you were an outsider or a casual viewer, would you know anything about him? Oh no, I've got no idea. Well, I think if we if we stick to the criteria we've set, yeah. then yeah. it would be a no for me personally. Cheslin. Yes, for me because I think his story. I think he's X factor on the field. Um, is incredible. Um, 
I don't know again whether he's utilised a lot on social media. Six hundred and forty-five thousand followers. But, on but I don't know what he's. Uh, you know, we know him as really lovely, he's a sweetheart, uh, and I think his, his story is great. I don't, does he maximise himself? Is there a lot of content out there? I don't know. But his X Factor on the field has got to put him in the top because he can do stuff that no one else can do. Yeah, he's a, he's. If we go on the criteria on pitch delivery, ten. Yeah. Uh, not only what in the moments that he delivers, but in the style he delivers it. Um, you know, he's got it on both ends of the ball. You've only got to look at that tackle that he made on Will Jordan in the final. Yeah, flipped him up, picked him up, flipped him around, and then Quagga Smith nicked the ball. Um, you know, he has everything. He's got an unbelievable backstory similar to Sears. Um, he's incredibly nice human being. We've did an interview when he was playing uh, in the European Cup final. He came over and saw us, didn't yeah. he? Afterwards, he's very open to that sort of media outlet. He's very marketable. In my opinion, yeah, love him. Um, I love him. I think he's like he he would you'd pay to watch him. Yeah, I think he absolutely makes you stand up and can't wait for him to get the ball. Cool. He's electric. I mean, electric, and and it's not just as you said as as, as yeah. attacking his defense yeah. is extraordinary. Yeah, and I I just he's so likable. Yeah, again, huge opportunity for him. I think for what he's done and his story and all the rest, you can't argue with it. And he's, I don't know, he's the one that I think could cut through yeah. even more. Okay, can you continue my abuse? Keep it coming, South Africa. Considering how little they give him the ball, he's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> Cheslin in. Marrow. Yes. Rock Nation. Tatler. Pearl, he's got his own Pearl Foundation. Political pause with Alistair Campbell. Quite controlled, I think, it would be fair to say, in how he's presented or how he presents He came himself. out of the blocks really well, didn't he, whenever we first saw him on the pitch I thought wow who is this guy Like, he is the next big thing by a long way and you know we had all the stories about Rock Nation signing him he was the one that every commercial partner wanted around the England set up um, you know, he was on the front cover he was at all the awards all the rest of it I don't get the impression he really wants to do it himself that's interesting but I don't know I don't know him I think he speaks very well he's classy he's yeah. um, he's, he's got he's obviously got serious presence you know when you see him around but I don't know whether he really wants it I, I, I get the fact that he wants to play rugby and be really good I'm not sure over That's here I mean. is I, it a bit contrived has you know? he, has he igni- well I think I'm trying to say nice has he ignited it I don't know because you think yeah. of, of all the talk all the presence his ability the fact that he didn't lose a game for the first X amount of years won absolutely everything Obviously, has an interesting backstory. It has the social responsibility stuff going. Everything. I don't think it. It just quite ha- hasn't happened as it should do. I don't know. I don't know whether it's England have held him back. The market over here has held him back. Rock Nation haven't had the the, the strike through. Or like you said, he isn't that asked about it. Uh, that, that, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think he's a he's a detriment to his own success. I think the way he started was so off the chart good, mm. and the level he was playing at for the first year was so high England and people Lions. now think he's playing rubbish but yeah he's still <laughs> one of the form uh, second rows in the world and what he, he does alone but they they can't let go of where he started uh, right. which was yeah, a different uh, which was at a different level an unsustainable level now I agree with you as well he's not he doesn't crave it and I don't think he maximises the bits that he has through his personality because he is quite quiet and I sort of a little bit disagree with you yes he's got a presence on the field but I don't think he's, his presence of how he holds himself off the field is that he's not like walking into Jono no. where you're like oh, holy shit this guy is yeah. the real deal I'm not getting a resounding yes here I mean do you think A he hasn't been maximised that he, we can maximise or he can maximise himself from this point do you see him as a future England captain? I think he has all the ability and talent and agency to to go nuclear. I I, I don't think it, I think he'll be massively successful because of his, his, his playing ability. I don't know if it will he will transcend the sport. Okay. I don't think he's. I, I, think I, he, I think he shies away from it rather than if 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 again if Hask was him. <laughs> yeah, I dread he, to think. He would, I dread to think. Yeah, you know, he would be constantly on it. Whereas, yeah. again, I think Hask could say from a social media point of view, he's not throwing out things that people go, I want to watch that. I think he'll always be a leader. I don't think he'll captain. He is the star of the show. No question for England for the next three or four years. I mean, he's still young enough, <laughs> mm. but he's got to want it. And they've got to sort of push him a little bit because you're absolutely right. That's when That'll bring the fans in. That'll commercialise the game. 
it needs four or five of the big stars because it's it's been all a bit sort of flatlined so far with him. And I think it could take off again, but if he, he needs to want it, I'm going to put him as a maybe there, yes. depending on where we get back to, because we've got three of our 10 so far. Given that we've been talking about the fact that the, the question is how much does Marrow want it, need it, etc. I think the next name is is fairly inevitable <laughs> where we're going to end up, which is Owen Farrell. I mean, look, I just it, don't think he wants to be anywhere near this conversation. Full no, stop. No, no, I don't think so. I think incre <laughs> I incredible. Actually think he's probably hearing it in his can. He's, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's raised an eyebrow. That he, that yeah, it's like a bat signal. It's but, but yeah. it's worth mentioning that you know, as England captain, it, it is an untapped resource. Owen Farrell, if he wanted it, he could possibly be the most marketable player in the game. Yeah, I think it's good. Do you think so? Well, I think... I think in the English market, if you talk about... If, if you go back to what you said about the 2003 squad and when England gets it right and the players buy in and there are characters there, it is an extraordinary market to be a part of. His success domestically and with what he's done for England as the leading point scorer of all time. But he test looks... Centurion, I'm saying if he wanted it, the world would be his oyster. Potentially, because I think... I don't. I just don't think he has the personality to carry it, though, because he's quite flat. He's sort of, you know, when he's interviewed, it's but not I think that, that compelling. Feeds into whether he wants it or well, not. Well, no, but it does. But I think that's a nature. I think that's his nature. Knows backstage is very different to the. Yeah, uh, this the is the conversation we tried to <laughs> have with him at a poorly chosen moment in the fact that he he also, if he opened himself up, that is the perception that every rugby fan around the world has of him that he's quite flat. He's quite angry. Gets him, you know, he's uber competitive. He's always shouting, you know, he's aggressive. Whereas actually, if you peel back the layers, he's actually a great dad, great, very funny, loves being around the lads, cares about brilliant the lads. Brilliant for John Jack, yeah, Paul John Jack. Yeah, br brilliant for his charitable endeavours that he does, but no one knows about it. But I think there's a shield there then, isn't yeah. there? So, so and actually, given what he's been through in this Rugby World Cup, who on earth can blame him? Yeah. I mean, why would you want to put yourself into anyone Well, he's else's had business? those highs and lows, hasn't he, in this, yeah. his career that he's probably reluctant to yeah, I mean, let, I just think... let loose a bit, you know, and I think it probably comes from his dad as well. Just quickly to pick on this. So do you remember Andy Murray in his early years had a very similar kind of perception with the public? And I don't quite know how... Well, I suppose the question is, how did he change that to become... Show, showed himself more more behind his character, his real character, because you'd hear ex exactly as you, you've just said about um, Farrell, of whenever you've seen him, when when you've seen Andy Murray behind the scenes, all you ever hear was, that's not what he's actually really like when he does his interviews. and He's really big, great, good fun. He's, you know, practical joking all the time. He's got a really dry sense of humour. You're like, well, you'd love to see it. And then that, suddenly that documentary lands. Yeah. Where he absolutely exposed himself, even right down to the you know the live hip yeah. replacement that he got, and it's just you've always heard these anecdotes about Andy Murray around the tennis tour that he's so well liked, but you can never put it no, together. That never, that never and links And then up, suddenly you saw that and you go, do you know what? He's actually he's I think he's brilliant now, and he's yeah. got he's actually dry humour, which you suddenly understand. That's the same thing with Owen. Or genuinely, from they Owen are very similar. Is that right? Yeah. Because if you look at if you look at what he was on the pitch, all he did was seem to argue with his box, argue with his own head, scream, yeah. look miserable, moan about everything. And, you know, I think if if they did a documentary on it, it would change the perception of him. He's only 31, he could go on, but I think now at the moment he doesn't sit there. Do you know you want to like him? Yeah. Even, yeah. you know, because I think he's such a good player, but yeah. you know, and you, you, his club form tends to, you know, travel well in his international form. He's part of every big moment that England are part of which makes him marketable on the field. If he could just, or he wants to balance it off the field, yeah, I mean, mega star. Take, yeah, take it from me. He's, he's lovely. I mean, and, and I don't really like anyone. Nobody really likes me. So I, and, but I'm telling and, you, he's and, great. And Colleen's yeah, mum is lovely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Farrell, maybe. Marcus Smith, too early. Eddie Jones says he's not a star yet, but he will be. No, I think I think yes. I think i tell you why, because he... It was the, the other most ridiculous thing I've heard Eddie say for a while. Okay, well, let's not dwell on Eddie. I think, I, think, I think he has X Factor. I think he's definitely more than a maybe because actually he has everything there. Marketability, um, talent, um, he's young. I think he needs to get it absolutely right on the pitch and be consistently playing and winning. And then it's a very easy job because he does have it all off the pitch. He was like the star of schoolboy rugby, wasn't yeah. he, coming through? Yeah. Um, I think he's the one with the most potential by far. Okay, he's but not... but needs to be that process needs to be managed through and again a plan. You're saying off the pitch he's almost ready to go. It's his on pitch product that needs a, 
a, it's a both, bit of clarity. It's both, you know, really. I think the consistency on the pitch is what we said. Of, if you do it right there, then you've permission to do it off the pitch, you know. He's up, but he's almost his position in terms of where he is and who's he up against is actually being a real holdback for him. Because let's say we didn't have Ford and Farrell, he would have to start, they'd have to play his way and they'd have to sort of build the game around Marcus Smith. But because you've got Faz and Fordy who've been there, done it, and aren't still aren't that old, and he, Marcus is what, 23? Was he 24? 24. Um, he, you know... Same age as Johnny Wilkinson was when he dropped for World Cup glory 20 mm-hmm. years ago. I hate to say his name in this conversation, but you're falling into an Austin Healy territory where Austin just moved around the bat line. Austin was a bloody good player. Yeah. But we had a great scrum, two great scrum halves as, as Kieran and Dawes at nine. But Clive wanted to get him in there somewhere because he was unbelievably quick. He yeah, played great every footwork. position for England in the back line, bar 12, I think. I think, yeah. Which is extraordinary. Which, which is unbelievable as a talent. And please, hopefully, pray to God Oz isn't listening to this. Right. Um, but it or was, det- it was it. detrimental to yeah. his career yeah. because he then became a utility player rather than sticking to what he knew. He yeah. knows. So that is a big question mark because I actually think if you look at what he does for Quinns, he is, ro- he is rocket fuel. So, Marcus Smith, into our potential top 10, yes or no? I'd say maybe for me. There's too many question marks. I'm yeah, going to so say maybe. Maybe? Yeah. Maybe. maybe. Okay. Should be. Should be. But This maybe time not. next year. Yeah. I'm going to stick Ardy Surveyor straight on yes. unless yeah. anyone disagrees yes. with that. Yeah. Future All Black, yeah. Rock Nation. Yeah, 100%. Um, also, because he's the only one from... Year. You know, he's the only one from the All Blacks, I think, who does anything outside of the model of that. That's Stay right. humble. Um, I think he own podcast, did his own series, da- does TikTok dances with him and his brother, does all the things that normal Kiwis and Māori people don't do not do from yeah. what I can see of that team. Bowden Barrett, two-time player of the year, 2015 Rugby World Cup winner, married to an influencer, but will be 37 at the next World Cup. Off to earn seven figures in Japan at the Toyota I, I don't. Uh, amazing player, credible bloke. I think Geordie's doesn't more do interesting. It. But it doesn't do, doesn't do anything. As a star, though. Off. Off the back of the World Cup, I think Geordie's more interesting okay. than Bowden. Okay. He's good looking, he's talented, he's successful, there's amazing moments. But doesn't does he move the needle off the field? No. No, he doesn't do anything like no. none but of those the, Kiwis no, do anything. Like, I, I think his time was a few years ago. He exploded on and did. And I think now there's so many good players in the all black side, he sort of plays his role at fullback, but I think Geordie yeah, but we're talking about the whole, the, even the whole, the, package, the whole, the whole, whole package. package. The only whole package from the All Blacks, truthfully, are the severe. Not okay. one of them does anything else other than if you take the playing out of the, which we know is yeah. the foundation. But we're talking about influence, influencing stuff by influencing. If you want kids to follow, they will follow Bowen Barrett because he's so incredible. What he does and his kicking in those moments. But will, they're will from he, within the rugby world. But from in the world, it's will, very he, grow, much will, within will the he hit world. anything else? No, I but don't. Then, think. But then the question is, he's going forward. Like Will Jordan, he's just turned twenty-five. He's got possibly nine years left on him equaled the world record of tries in this World Cup he is the most unplayable winger I think Talia is obviously up there as well but he is incredible in terms of he had a poor <coughs> uh, final for, by his standards but then is he the next thing who could he scores absolute wonder tries he breaks tackles for fun uh, I think he's strong. incredible well Will Jordan, I, I think Will, Bowden Barrett to me was two or three years ago, okay. absolute, you know, the big star of the game, but that's, we're not talking about that now, I think Will Jordan forward. to me is actually incredible to watch, he's like, he's unstoppable for the next few years, I would say, if yeah. he keeps that momentum going, but again, it's whether with the, he's part of an all black yeah. team and gets lost as an individual, do I think that's... Yet. The they, they 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 communicate as a team as a unit. He'll be a very 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 good rugby player yeah. for right. the next okay, five. Will the he be a superstar? Will, will Don't know. Will someone yeah. tell me know. to? Let's yeah. fly through a few of the others because we're obviously going to come on to. There's one big name we haven't got to yet. Taniela Tupa. I'm sort of beginning to look at countries and therefore the biggest names in. Mark Noah Kantawasi you could yeah, potentially have in Australia he, as well. He's potentially got some... But, mm, but is he a star of the game for the next four years? Well, it, I mean, it comes down to Australia doing something on the pitch. He can't do it by himself, can he? <laughs> no. Great I rugby mean, players, you, great you rugby know, players. again. I mean, you look at Tupo on in the Barbarians game on Saturday, just made three line breaks or whatever he did, and mm. just carrying players. He has got that potential, but again, he's down to being a prop that sometimes yeah. he can he can get beaten up. So and, he's a no for now. Yeah. Yeah. Lewis Reece Samet. Interesting one. Boy band looks, 22, very, very quick. I mean, he's done this documentary, hasn't he? The BBC yes. Wales did. Um, 
which was a bit Gavin Henson-y to me um, before. It was, a, it was a bit forced. Like he hasn't, like he hasn't done much this guy right. yet. Yeah. He, he looks the part and he can obviously play. Um, it was sort of cringe. Like I was watching it through sort of, you know, at the back of the sofa, some of the moments in it. Really? But, I, I, but at least he's trying. Be, you might not be the target audience. I'm it definitely well not be. the target audience. I'm yeah. definitely not. Um, but, you know, we have a pretty good idea of what will work and what won't work. However, it'll be interesting that I think they're having a go. Yeah. And he Credit looks the part if he can get and play in a very good Welsh team, which is up for debate. Let's see how they do in the next few years. He will transcend the sport there, which he's, which he's obviously started to do and they've got a plan and they're working on it. It's just whether it is going to be too contrived because he's got to do it on the pitch as well. Having spoke to him in, and spent a fair bit of time with him in Monaco uh, for the Grand Prix, he will definitely do everything that comes his way. Right? right, he said he wanted to move to Monaco and live in Monaco. I mean, he, you know, some of the things I was like, "How is that even <laughs> happen?" <laughs> so I, but generally, what I think he needs to do, he has to. <laughs> this is detrimental. Um, he has to move clubs. I think if he went to um, a Toulouse yeah. or somewhere and got involved in a team that played the rugby that he needed, you'd see him beating people week in, week out. He's that good, scoring huh? tries. Yeah. But. And that will elevate him. Then you add the other bits in there because he'll t then have a different story. He'll have a different market in terms of the French market. Everyone over here knows how good he is, how fast he is, what he could be. You know, he. Uh, You'd get a celeb bird. That would power he, it forward. Um, he obviously. Great name as well. Yeah. yeah. He obviously controversially did the old Ronaldo uh, against Portugal, Assume. which yeah. went down mixed reactions, but that's what sort of elevates you to people yeah. knowing who you are. But also talk copying Ronaldo, like come up with your own, like, not, not to say yeah, there's a problem with it. I know it's like a, a compliment because he's wearing, you know, um, Ronaldo's boxer shorts and all that kind of stuff. And he's come out and said he loves him. It's fine. And I think it's a homage because it's in a different sport. But fuck me, mate, invent your own Here's one. Here's a different question. Should we be sitting wingers and stuff down and centers going, right, you need us. What's your celebration going to be? Christ yeah. alive. Look at the reaction Chris Ashton got. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He almost got turfed out of the sport altogether. <laughs> but, but, but the, thing, <laughs> yeah. the thing is, that's where you've got to go through. And the thing, what was brilliant about Chris was the fact that he, didn't he, got, he got told not to do it. Yeah. And the first try he got, he did <laughs> it. Yeah. He just, and again and again and, and again. again, and, again. again. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it was like, and everyone wanted to see it. And every, every time he got to the trial line and he jumped, it was like, Aah! But that is what we need. And that was his trade yeah, ball. Yeah, like yeah, that. When absolutely. you see the ash splash, yep. is a trade ball, in, 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 you know, and, and that that grew outside of the outside of the sport. You do need it. But you've so, got to you've got to have like yeah. you said. You've got to listen. So this is my thing. So Let me do he's it. He's interesting. Lewis, listening. Don't steal now. Let's let's work on one. <laughs> <your laughs> but own. he's twenty two. I think I think he Potential. has. He could rock it up yeah. this list. Yes. With all the things that, that, that um, we're talking about in terms of potentially a club move in the right environment, Lovely but he obviously quads. wants to do it, and genuinely has the potential yeah. to do it so I think that could I've be quite exciting the, change the maybe list into a potential list yeah. which I think will tidy things up when we come back Finn Russell top earners in the world rugby seven figure salary at Bath um, he's obviously had his moments with Gregor over the years but now indispensable for Scotland 34 at the next World Cup so pushing it a bit no, I'd say but uh, God he puts bums on seats I'd yeah. say play, X Factor wise just not marketed properly, not utilised properly, don't know whether he wants it, whether he needs it. He's quite quiet. He's actually more humble. You know, all the stories you've heard about him on the piss and being a bit of a loose loose cannon, fine. We, we met him. He's really humble, really quiet, nice. Yeah. Again, you, someone would have to take him and work him, I think, to, to, to really do it. But certainly X-Factor player on the field, definitely one of the players you'd come and watch. I just don't know whether he can help grow the sport unless someone really gets hold of him. I, no, I, I think I think he's he's an absolute worldy. I think I think the way he reacts, I think he's great for people to look at if they want to develop their game of how to just knock off mistakes and go, right, I'll get it right the next time and stick to what you're doing because you know it's where your strength is. It's so easy to then revert to a different type if you've made a couple of errors. He doesn't. He sort of steps. He'll push it yep. on, but not in a in a ludicrous way. He just knows what he is as a player. I think, you know, the way that he can stand the skill sets that he has um, are what we want to see week in, week out on the field. And it's what, you know, you buy a ticket to see it when you go by watch Yeah, him. I mean, I love watching him. I think everybody respects him. He, he's complete maverick, but brilliant to watch on, on the pitch. I think it's, it's if we're being ruthless on his marketability off the pitch, is very limited. Yeah. But um, 
Small, Again. Smallest arms in worst world rugby. Yeah. Yeah. That was my first work on massive answer arm session, suntan, <laughs> arms. <laughs> and then and then I'd go, I'd say to Scotland you know, the SIU would be like, listen, put him everywhere, build a content series. Like get, get I want people he's so good on the field, people want to know what's what's yeah. behind the curtain. Do a documentary on him, do a streamable thing on him, find out what he does, how does he train, his routine, even do a mini YouTube series. Yeah, even just expose it. Like I mean he's probably if the Lions were playing tomorrow, he'd be the starting, yeah. wouldn't he? Starting yeah, 10? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You're probably right. Yep. So, are we saying he's a star? Yep. Are we saying he's definitely should a star? Be. Yeah, yeah a star. I, I think so, but again, Just needs, yeah. opportunity market, way more. Yeah, yeah okay. The, I mean, what we're finding out is everything needs to be how they market them. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's, right? that's, I mean, Which the game isn't doing. So, so he is a star. Is he is a shows star unraveling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Again. <laughs> but no, but there's the reason why you're doing the show. Yes. Yeah. Well, potentially. For that exact yeah, but reason. It, but it's so weird. It's weird how, how, how all these players have got X Factor. So the first names of the team sheet, if you like rugby, you'd watch them. Just no one knows anything about I generally feel in some sports that aren't, mass followed which is football I think agencies have got or agencies or brands are really lazy with how they use their sports yep. yeah. and sport, sports ambassadors we have got four and, and one country to go I'm going to stick Antoine <laughs> Dupont straight yes, on because yeah. that's ridiculous yeah. not yeah. to yeah. Uh, Roman Untermac well, there's a sort of hybrid here there's Roman Untermac yeah. and, and Matthew Jalabert yeah. I think Untermac he's fucking good looking he's very good at what he does I I think can't understand well. French particularly well. I don't know whether he's any, any, uh, what he's like <laughs> on camera, but he seems to be all right. He was sort of face of the Rugby World Cup without actually playing, which is yeah. quite an achievement. I, he was I, on th all I the think, ads, branding. I think both of them are. I think Jalabert's played himself into it. Okay. And I think Entomac is. I think you've got Entomac's cool. I think he's yeah. very yeah. cool. I just, you know, the man. fact he was, it was so disappointing yeah. that he wasn't, he didn't end up playing yeah. through um, those games because he would have carried yeah. probably that team as well. I think he's got the lot. This guy, yeah. I would say he's up for me straight in. But again, I, in. again, you know, obviously the French brands and stuff like that. You know what they did with Dupont, they just need to harness it, get his get his personality out there for them. But I think de definitely they're definitely in. Ange Capuzzo of Italy. <sighs> um, I think I think if he's playing for any other nation, definitely. Yeah. I think he is he is stuck in the fact that he's playing in an Italian nation that doesn't have that many eyeballs on him. But I but also, but he has the potential yeah, yeah. Oh, to yeah, like without, Italian without rugby. Shadow, yeah. yeah. He has, without a shadow of Great to watch. But look at what Parise did. Like, Sergio Parise is another one, one, right? He was probably always the biggest Italian player for however many last years. One of the best number eights I've ever seen. But again, wasn't wasn't ever utilised properly. Like, did some adverts, was very rugby-centric, but wasn't ever growing outside the sport, which is a discipline because he was head and shoulders the best Italian player for a number of years. It just can, it's just it's going to be contained because he plays for yeah. sadly, and they're just continued on to perform. Yeah, and and you're talking about players going to Toulouse. He yeah. has absolutely rocketed up in terms of form since yeah. moving. The only problem is internationally, he's going to have he's not going to have those as many moments as he would playing for Toulouse or whatever. His club is going to dictate more than his country is. Gonzalo Casada off to Italy, and it'll be fascinating to see how they found him. I'm going to stick Keita Inagaki in there, who I don't think is going to do a lot on the global sort of push to to grow world rugby. But just for reference, it's worth looking outside of the traditional territories. Uh, he played in the Miracle of Bright Brighton game against the Box in 2015 for Japan. He's got a seven-figure salary. He's got a model wife who was Miss Japan in 2012, and he's the fifth highest player on the social media charts in this World Cup. I mean, I... I, I so I suppose that's a question, really. Are, are Japanese players only ever going to be big in the Japanese market in rugby as it is right now? Or can you see one or two of these people? I, I guess, the, I guess you don't see them, you know. You, yeah. you don't see enough of them. It's back to what we're saying yeah. about the rugby calendar. You, you see them so little in terms of, you know, on, on, on the field that it really is around Rugby World Cups. Yeah. Now, hopefully this, you know, potential new calendar might change that with the different sort of world and global calendar that they're trying to create we'll maybe see a bit more of him but I mean in terms of watching him so far he's been brilliant I think Yeah. but you know, he seems to be he's going to carry a team it looks like just where Japan were so good mm. in, um, in their own World Cup the, you know, this was a little bit disappointing yes. wasn't it and actually coming out of that he's going to have to carry a team it's a bit like Italy you need them to be, you, you need to be part of a really good side Yeah. but we need to see him more otherwise there's no way he can transcend the sport and a couple of youngsters to watch Vinaya Habosi, who's a 23-year-old 100-kilo winger at Rassi 92 and Fijian. Henry Arundel, of course, who's off to Rassi 92. <laughs> Kurtley Aronser, who is one of the hot properties in South Africa. Louis Bialbari, who is the winger for France, of course, um, 
elite top level speed, I think you could probably say. And Posola Tuolangi, the latest in the dynasty, <laughs> oh, no, who is no. ripping up trees in the top 14, son of Henry and nephew it, of Manu. It feels like there are so many good players bubbling Coming under the through, surface. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, I know a bit more of the Irish right Academy and, and that those that system. There's so many good players coming through that Leinster Academy, even the Ulster Academy, yeah. down through Munster now. And then you look at all these, like look at Henry Arundel. I mean, what a star he could be. What could a star. Be. And he's hungry for it as well. Yeah. You'd say, you know, in terms of, of he wants to play, he's got personality, he's a big unit, he's got this good looking boy, he's got all the all the ability. That's a there. great move for him though. Yeah. I think that's a yeah, it's a great move for him. I think he he sort of gets you off your seat. Yeah. I think he's obviously with Sam and all these you know, sevens, and then he's come through scoring ridiculous yeah, tries. Just I just think Sergi's tries in the under twenties is just, <laughs> yeah, just outrageous. Just, there are a couple of older statesmen who are worth a mention, Charles Piatau. Now 32, but everyone knows obviously what he can do. Faf de Klerk, the hair, the dressing up, the budgies, back to back world champion. The memes. And Quay Cooper, who's, you know, 35 years old now. We're probably not going to see again in an Australian jersey, but half a million on Instagram plus. Um, the, the thing it's, that's really it's funny, it's funny. I think a lot of this is like any rugby player right now probably doesn't have a social media manager. No. Yet most top footballers will have. Something that built into yeah. something. But they can probably so afford it because of the wages that I, they earn. Yeah, and I, and that's the problem is I don't think, unless you do it yourself and you're really proactive like Hask or, or you know, you're not going to force yourself through. I mean, Quay Cooper, so much of it goes on social. So I think he's got someone who basically runs his for him through all his training bits and bobs that he does and everything else. Whereas I don't feel, I, th I feel with our potentials, if someone actually gave them a social marketing plan, well, maybe lot, GBR will open lot of, up our... A lot of people will become... <laughs> social team. No Irish players on there. Well, so, Steve, well, this was my point. This is the final <laughs> well, question. For a reason. Is that there isn't... Well, have we got that wrong? Who is the star of Irish rugby right now? And is the Irish setup conducive to producing stars? Because from outside looking in, other than Bod... Can we both sat downstairs before you came in and said, I can't, I can't pick. There's loads of great but, players who I'd want in my team. But I, but I would go so far as to say, I don't think the IRFU want stars. They want the connection that you've mentioned, Steve. I can remember going back to the days at Sky. Every single week, we would go and do a game in Ireland with Leinster, Munster, Connacht or Ulster. And every week, we would ask for an Ireland player to join us in the studio, Johnny Sexton, Peter Romani, Rory Best. And every week, the answer was no. I mean, I find that so strange, but... I, I totally agree. They're a bit. It's a bit like we talked about the All Blacks and New Zealand rugby. And I think it's a fairly similar thing. It's this team spirit, and this, they don't want anyone to sort of rise above that. Um, the slogan, I think. I think, I, slogan, I think ironically, obviously, since um, you know Brian O'Driscoll retired, he's still yeah. the biggest star in town. There's no question. And I think you've then got Sexton was sort of created like that, as we talked about, but more about coming to the end of his career. Yes, had this you know, great success over the last few years. But I don't know. I, again, I think it's a huge opportunity for one of the Irish guys to, to stand up. It's whether they're allowed to. Kane and Doris, I think, yeah. could be. But, I, I, you know, we've asked them to all three. Just, they, they never want to do it. They don't, not but I, it's but, be us, but just, just as, a, as, a, as a team, they're just not hungry for it. They're not encouraged to do it. That's it. I think I, they're I think, worried about it. I think, I think they don't want to break ranks. In terms of, you know, the big marketable superstars of the game, it's hard to argue that they're, they're, it's a bit like and a bit similar to the All Blacks. Yeah, you, you, um, but you don't rise like above it. Drico, Drico took risks, obviously. They, you know, Dyed his hair. Married an actor it, and sort of lived a little bit more of that celebrity life but managed to manage it. Obviously, his way up went up and down along with it. But, um, you know, but he came out on top because, he, you know, if you, the thing is, you've got to be willing to take those risks and back yourself and still perform on the field. And Drico's performances never really dropped no. on the field. So no, everyone can get on board with it if you're still the most important player in the team. And that's what makes the super superstars who will go right I'll go after every it day in the pitch because I know yeah. I can back it up yeah. but that's quite hard to do because it's been driven out of you since the moment that you stepped into a rugby <laughs> club to yeah. do it and that's the biggest thing that has to change Is and this is what Michael Yormack was saying when we had him on from Rock okay. Nation about how you grow it he said of course you can have a player that transcends the team but still the team is the team will always carry its own following but someone might follow a player from different parts without really knowing their team. And it's based on trust and experience and treat them like adults. And, you know, this is about 
protecting and future proofing the game of rugby. Yeah. It needs the biggest stars possible. Otherwise, we're going to flatline. Yeah. So I think the more all these unions and rights holders and clubs and managers can all loosen up a bit and trust them a bit and educate themselves around, like the, the influence of social media is extraordinary. When you get it right, yeah. it is so brilliant. And I think we need to embrace it. Um, and some of these players just need to sort of, you know, get out there and be part of it because yeah. actually they've got the stories. You know, th if they're doing it on the pitch, then they have the permission to do it yeah, off I the agree. pitch. I yeah, agree. so it's the it's the sort of the, the some of the parts and the ingredients are all there for rugby, but I'm not sure it's been fully utilised at the moment. And I think there's there's two or three now. If they make the step change, we'll see a dramatic. This list will be very easy in a year to do. Okay, I think we should regroup in twelve months session see whether there has been any progress and whether the list changes at all. To sum up then, what has been a, a bit of a knockabout, we have a potential list of superstars in the game. It's worth reiterating. <laughs> I just looked at this list about Rugby Union and fourth by engagement base, but it's off the charts, off the Gen Z. Well, it's not on there. Right, it just it's not, yeah, it's so Rugby Union is <laughs> not in the top 20 That's the EY most thing. engaged yeah. sports for Gen Z. It's not in the top 20, which is alarming. And yes. if that doesn't ring a bell, that's the Ernst & Young report, isn't right. it? If that doesn't ring an alarm bell, I don't know what does. On our potentials list, and it's worth reiterating, I know we've sort of, we, we've bounced it around. We are dealing with the cream of the crop, the biggest names, the best players in the sport right now. But we have a potential list of Marrow, Owen, if he wants it, Marcus Smith, Kaelin Doris, Louis Rees Zamet, Gary Ringrose, Ange Capuzzo, and Geordie Barrett, and Will Jordan, actually. Those are the guys who, if they get it right, could and should become the stars of the next four years. But on our list of the, the biggest stars in the game right now, we've got Sia Khaleesi, Eben Etzebeth, Cheslin Colby, Ardi Savea, Finn Russell, uh, Antoine Dupont, uh, Roman Untermack, and Matthew Jalabert. I think in the interest of time, there are three names that stand out there, which is Sia Khaleesi, Antoine Dupont, and Ardi Savea. Let's work out which one of these three is the star right here, right now. Can you rank in order of one, two, three, one being the best, on pitch, Tins, Sia, Antoine, and Ardi. One, two, three. On the pitch, in terms of what they do, uh, well, Ardi's won Player of the Year, yep. I think, but I still think Antoine Dupont is the best player in so World An Rugby. Antoine won, Ardi two. Ardy two, then see it. I mean, it's v by the way, we're dealing in minutiae. These we are, are decimal dealing points. in very, very small points yeah. here, and it's a personal opinion. So, yes. I mean, it's interesting. Enough, yours. P yeah. Peter Steph's toy played better than yeah. Sia and yeah. put one of the best back row performances I've ever seen of anyone. Yeah. But he doesn't have any social media prints and he's not a superstar like Sia yeah. So, we're, would, we're dealing with the three best yeah, so players I mean, in the so world I'd right go, now. I'd go the no same, same yeah. order. Okay, no, you're going to mark character and social media presence. One, two, and three. Don't forget <sighs> um, Antoine and his yellow dress so on GQ. Characters one, Sia. Um, two's... Oh, two's Antoine, three's Ardy. But I, uh, again, it's minutiae. Again, it's minutiae. Yeah, yeah. And it, these are slithers rather than yeah. enormous um, decisions. Earning and brand potential, Steve. One, two, three. Sia, number one. one. You can't take away what he's done and, you know, his story is going to be forever enduring. Um, be a highly, rocket, highly it'd, likeable. It would be a rocket ship for Anton Dupont if France had won the World Cup. But yep. that's the, yeah. Um, I th actually think Dupont is number two for me. Yeah. Um, love watching him. Got so much to tell. Cool as hell. Um, I've got genuine presence in the way he plays as well. There's a real swagger. And then number three. Party three. So... In this non-scientific uh, <laughs> process, we've now ended up Please with Sia and Antoine tied in first place, which means we're going to have a vote between the three of you. Yeah. The biggest star in the world game right here, right now, is Sia Khaleesi or Antoine Dupont. James Sia Haskell. Khaleesi. Sia, for, Sia for James. Sia Khaleesi. Sia for Steve. Off the bat, just because they won the World Cup. Sia Don't say we could have fucking run, done that all in five minutes and packed up and gone home. We're still going now. I think that's quite an interesting <laughs> process, actually. And I think we should do this again sometime. Yeah. And and the, I suppose the question I'd come back to, therefore, is for everything we're talking about and the, the, the marketing and the brands and the agents, you would say it comes down to what you deliver on the pitch as the most important peg of all of it. Back well, no, I think, I, think, I think what you do on the pitch allows you to do everything else. Yeah. And you look, to, you look at the biggest stars, whether it's tennis, golf, track and field, so whatever. Um, no, I, th I think it comes down to, you know, what these big, big stars 
and the reason they're the biggest stars in any of these sports is because they do it on the pitch first and foremost and that's their absolute focus otherwise it's in and out you know you've seen so many careers when they're more interested on their about their social media or where they're you know what events they're going to is what they're doing in training or actually performing on the pitch and it, you know it's a 12 month wonder whereas these ones who are the biggest stars perform time in time out yeah and then they can go and have the permission to do all the other stuff. So I think that's what a lot of those guys, but a lot of them are doing that. The three I think we've picked yeah. are actually doing that. It also comes down to the game, accepting the shift. Why Why are we off the bottom of the chain on Gen Z? Because we're not allowing them to go and be themselves and show themselves, and we've got to change that. I think there is a shift that way, but it's got to happen quicker, and that comes from the the higher the higher bodies in the game, the international communities are out not being so protective and trying and, and to think, and tell the player they can't be whoever they want to be. That's right. And think about rugby as an entertainment mm. product. You know, that isn't about fireworks when somebody scores a try. That's not entertainment. It's about actually looking at it as a sort of almost like a festival that people want to come in like they're doing with F1. F1 is like, you know, they're treated like the Oscars. You know, you're coming circus, in. Isn't it? It, yeah, is. Yeah. it is. It's like a mega moment over the weekend. And, the, you know, that's a lot of the way F1 have decided to market themselves as a sport. Rugby needs to do that as well. It's a big entertainment destination. That sport has to be happening. So um, it's a big step change, I think. And it's not just about the music you have, but it, I, I think it, I, the audience is there to want that. Um, but the game wants to... They, the, the game needs to want it at the same time. Are you cautiously optimistic, very optimistic, nervous, pessimistic? about where the game is going. <laughs> Sorry, laughing because he comes up with optimistic, not optimistic, panic, panic. Every time we did, we he comes had, up with... This, was every, this I'm was every dinner we had in France. It's only because you were drunk and every time we recorded <laughs> that neither of you could understand a very simple question. <laughs> I'm actually all of those things about right. rugby. Uh, rugby, it's, it's sort of a bit schizophrenic at the moment until yeah. it gets its own house in order, um, which it can do, but it needs to come from the top. So that needs broadcast alignment. It needs the game to be all aligned with women's and men's together because that still feels a bit too disjointed to me even though they're trying there's a lot of like brands are actually pushing that agenda like O2 is pushing that agenda rather than the, the actual you know governing body of the game itself so it, it could do it all but um, you'd want to shake the tree again mm -hmm. and actually get all the, the, the major right holders in one room and say how are we going to market this game collectively not all these different parts because it's it's a bit all over the show. But I feel there's great hope because the audience is there and brands want to be around it. Like it's a very, very commercial game that could have great success. Lots of good ideas. Let's hope someone with some power out there is listening. Steve, absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much. Keep doing the good work. Hopefully one day we will get there before all of us are six feet under. Um, <laughs> fascinating debate, fascinating discussion. We are, as we have said, only been dealing with the very cream of the crop within the game. But at the end of a good hour, of knocking it about. Sia Khaleesi is our biggest star in the game right now. Good stuff, Steve. Thank you very much indeed. Just before we go, a couple of bits of housekeeping for you. And it is congratulations to Vaughan Simpson, who is the winner of our City Index Rugby World Cup prediction game. City Index, who offers spread betting and CFD trading across thousands of markets. Vaughan came home with a total of 63.75 points. And would you believe it, support South Africa. So we're absolutely delighted for you, Vaughan. Many, many congratulations. Uh, we'll hopefully be back with that for the Six Nations. A quick reminder as well that we're off on our Good Bad Rugby tour at the moment. We have 10 shows remaining. We've had an absolute blast so far. And if you fancy joining us, uh, then head to cuffandtailor.com. But that is it for this week's show. We have been The Good, The Bad and The Rugby in association with Continental Tyres. We are a folding pocket production. And this episode was produced by Tom Edwards. Look after yourselves and we'll see you next week. <laughs>